Fallen Giants, Sleeping Giants, or Former Giants, whatever you want to call them, they're by far the most interesting teams to rebuild in career mode. Usually they're clubs that were successful about 40 years ago but couldn't quite compete with some of the bigger clubs from their nation, so they fell back down the leagues and that's where they are today. Today I've found three of the most interesting teams from some of the most interesting leagues to suggest for your next save. I've got a team that was massive in the 1950s, I've got one that was huge in the 1980s and I've got one that was still very big just 20 years ago. So no matter what period of football interests you the most, I've got you covered. My first recommendation is the French team Stade de Reims. I've seen thousands of tweets about their manager, Will Still, and his famous winning streak from last year, but for FC24, the hype seems to have really died down. I'm not sure why, because they still have one of the best histories in France, as well as being a club that's set up really well for a career mode. I like the idea of this team so much that I'm actually considering making a series about them, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. In France, Rans are one of the most legendary clubs. Their reputation hasn't crossed either the Channel or the Atlantic, because I doubt the majority of my British and American subscribers know that much about them at all, so let's have a quick 30 second crash course on their history. The club was founded in 1931, stayed amateur for 4 years and then World War II disrupted the team, but they'd go on to win the first division title in 1949. The following season, the club won their first Coupe de France, and that's not a bad start for the first 20 years of your club. But what came next was even better. In 1953 and 55, they won a second and third French league title before reaching the first ever Champions League final where they'd lose 4-3 to Real Madrid. It must have been so devastating to have lost that game because they were actually 2-0 up after just 10 minutes. To compound things, they would also go on to lose the 1959 final too, losing to Real Madrid 2-0 this time and a second defeat in the final. In total, Rans have actually won 6 league earn titles, 4 Super Cups and 2 French Cups, but since 1970 have only won a single second division title. This history is almost unmatched in France, and that's why I think Rans are probably the most underrated fallen giant save in the entire game of FIFA. If we can get back to the present day, the Rans team actually has the potential to become really good yet again. Nakamura, Darami and Ito is an interesting and very usable front three. It's also a good marker for the type of players that Rans like to sign, with 12 different nations currently in their squad on day one. African talent is absolutely everywhere, including three of your highest potential players, with Agbagdu, Diakate coming from Ivory Coast and Richardson currently playing for Morocco. With an academy that also produced eight of the French squad for the 1958 World Cup, it's not unrealistic to also lean heavily into youth scouting. Rans have produced some truly elite players, including Just Fontaine, who still currently holds the World Cup record for scoring 13 goals in a single World Cup tournament with France in 1958. If a club with an elite history, a record of producing world-class players and a manager who used to get fined for not having a coaching license isn't enough to interest you in a rebuild save, then that's fine because we have another two teams that might be more for you. But I personally think that Rans are one of the most underrated clubs for a save inside career mode. As a Nottingham Forest fan, I don't think I could actually recommend a Fallen Giant save without mentioning the Tricky Trees. In FC24, they're actually in the best position they've been in probably any FIFA ever. We're no longer in the mid-2010s where they were a financial failure version of Forest, or in the mid-2000s where it was a third division League One side. Now, Forest are starting to finally feel like a Premier League team once again. You might know some of the story behind why they are a fallen giant already, but in case you don't, let's do another quick rundown of Forest history. They spent the first 110 years moving between the top two divisions in English football, but rarely ever actually competed for major honours until Brian Clough arrived in 1975. Clough, who's also known as Old Big Head, took over Forest and got them promoted in 1977. Once in the first division, Clough would stun the footballing world by winning the league at his first attempt. That's a pretty good achievement, but things get even better, because just 12 months later, Trevor Francis, who was the first million pound footballer, bagged the goal that would win Forrest their first European Cup. Just a year later, Forrest would win a second European Cup, and it would take over 30 years for another club to win back-to-back -back Champions Leagues. It's absolutely amazing that it only took Clough 5 years to transform Forrest from a second division regular squad to the best team in the world. And this story is basically a real life career mode save. But the thing is, you now don't actually have to match Clough because Forrest are already a Premier League team. 
The Tricky Trees are now in their second season in the Premier League and the squad is starting to get stacked with some good talent. Murillo, Danilo and Alanga are some of the best performing young players in the entire league this season and FIFA doesn't quite recognise this with their overall ratings and potentials. Over the past decade, the Forest Academy has also been one of the most prolific when they were in the Championship, but since promotion, there's only been a single Academy player debut. After the sales of Brennan Johnson and Joe Worrell, only Ryan Yates is still at the club having come through at Forest. This really needs to change, so in your career mode save, I would definitely recommend pumping as much money as you can into the academy, because this is going to be crucial to keep Forest playing in the Forest way. The main reason for the lack of academy players is the massive step up Forest faced in 2022. Promoted squad was worth just £12 million, which is £105 million cheaper than the next cheapest Premier League squad at the time. There was a lot of catching up to do, even to get level with the teams like Fulham and Bournemouth. It's quite interesting to actually try and match this real-life transfer policy at Forest, trying to sign dozens of players from Europe and Brazil, and spending around £100 million every single summer. If you like playing in the most detailed league on FIFA, with a real stadium, real manager and a lot of money to spend, then I think Forest might suit you more than Rem. While Forest have all of these things, Rems have absolutely none. It should be fun building up Forest with the existing squad, a new academy and as many high rated Brazilians as you can find. It's always going to be a fun save and I think it'll be even better thanks to being in the Premier League. My last recommendation is a little bit different. Financed by a convicted fraudster, Callisto Tanzi, Palmer would win eight trophies between 1992 and 2002, but somehow never managed to win Serie A. Despite being runners-up or third place on five different occasions, Palmer would actually go on to win three Copper Italians, one Super Copper, and two Europa Leagues, but now are playing in Serie B. As the only club in this video that actually needs a promotion, this one is actually going to be the longest save by far. The Palmer team shouldn't actually need too many signings to win Serie B, but the step up is going to be quite big. Their 70 rated team is actually quite far behind the worst three Serie A teams, so you need to sign as many 65 to 70 rated young players who can improve before you get promoted just so you're at the right level to be competing in Serie A. In real life, things are a little bit better. The club have been playing some really nice one-touch football, and honestly, they seem to play at a better standard than some of the Serie A teams I've seen playing this year. If you can build a tiki-taka dynasty in Italy, then Parma has the chance to finally win their first Italian title. To win this title, you'll have to overtake both Inter and AC Milan, who have good relationships with Parma. Di Marco, Bastoni and Andrea Conti have all moved on loan from the city of Milan to the city of Parma. If you're interested in keeping your transfers realistic, then make sure you're looking for players at these clubs who are on loan. Of course, the Palmer Academy was also a big part of their success back in the 90s. Their record sale is still Gianluigi Buffon, who was sold for 53 million euros all the way back in 1998. Playing with the second tier means that you'll be able to give your very best academy player some real good game time while going for promotion, because the majority of the teams in Serie B are about 65 to 68 overall. If you're into replicating recent successes rather than distant ones, then I think Parma is probably the best save of the three for you. Serie A and Serie B aren't really the best leagues for realism on FIFA, with Serie A having four unlicensed teams, but playing in Italy is always fun. I always think that Serie A is the most competitive big league in Europe on FIFA, so you should be able to drag Parma back to the top, compete with the 10 or so teams that will be going for the title each year, and maybe finally win Serie A with Parma. I hope you liked at least one of these save ideas, and like I said, I'm probably going to be uploading a new FIFA career mode series very soon on this channel, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that, consider becoming a channel member if you'd really like to support the channel, and thank you for watching. Check out the video in the playlist on screen right now, and I'll see you soon. Cheers, and goodbye.